So yeah. guys, welcome back to another episode of the Bamson Experience. Coming to you live from, I guess it's not live by the time uh, you no. guys watch it or listen to it, but uh, we're coming to you from Jakarta, Indonesia. Um, one of our absolute favorite places in the world. It is indeed, and this is, I would say by far, our favorite hotel on tour. Definitely, it feels it feels like home. I mean, we've been it here does. so many times. Uh, Hotel Fairmont, Jakarta. Um, this episode is not sponsored or anything. <laughs> no, we just recommend it. Like, it's so good, it's so good. And uh, they took good care of us last year when we did the episode with the uh, Marcus Gideon mm-hmm. as well. So yeah, we recommend, if you ever go to Jakarta, you should visit this place. And I was, uh, I, I, I did a few videos on my personal YouTube channel mm-hmm. as well, where I was uh, I was cooking nasi goreng. Yeah, yeah, I remember that one. Yeah. It was a great video. We also did one video where we went to the Doris in Iron. Mm-hmm. Um, That's one of your more popular videos. It right? was very popular. And it was like, I was injured last time we were here in the summer. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. So me and Oliver thought that we were going to do a lot of vlogs, mm-hmm. a lot of like uh, match play action and stuff like that. Yeah. But um, we didn't really got to do it because I was injured and we had a, a tough time out here. But we did one video and it was just like, I had this idea, let's just bring the iPhone, go to the Estoros and Iron, mm. record a little bit, um, show the experience uh, of being a spectator over there. And it got like more than half a million yeah, views or something. That's crazy. Yeah, that's it's, it's, it's kind of crazy. We need these videos to get that kind of views. Yeah, they're not that good yeah, though. No. <laughs> that's true, that's true. We can't expect that at all. No, no. No, but it's um, it's good to be back. India is a wrap. Um, it's a wrap. I arrived here today. You arrived yesterday. yesterday, yeah, Saturday. So yeah, I thought like when I was done in India, it was kind of like I just want to move on to Indonesia. It's uh, again the best hotel. I think it's a bit nicer to like move around more freely here and stuff. So I thought it would be better preparation for uh, Indonesian mm-hmm. masters to go a little bit early. You don't really do much in India, right? I mean, you no. The thing is, like, you stay in the hotel a lot. Yeah. yeah, you go to the hall. You don't go outside for food too much and stuff. Oh. Like, we had a few issues with some people getting food poisoning and stuff. So I think all of us are pretty, like, pretty cautious not to to go out and and do all the local stuff, which yeah. is a shame because I think if you really want to experience India, you probably have to go out as well, right? But yeah, we're there to play badminton, and like, if you get food poisoning, like my roommate did. Mm-hmm. You don't get to do what you actually came there for so yeah yeah it's uh and another thing for me is the uh, the quality of the air mm. i mean it's simply not uh, an enjoyable experience to be out in outside yeah, yeah, i yeah. mean i mean because of the pollution it, because yeah. of the pollution it's so it's so crazy i mean i don't to be fair i don't think jakarta and kuala lumpur and also bangkok i don't think these big big cities has the best uh, air quality no, but delhi sure. is i also that's I f- insane yeah i felt like it was worse this time compared to last time but maybe it's just because it's been like four years since i went there last so maybe i just don't remember but i also felt that it was it was quite tough this time i actually i remember i w- i i decided not to go to to delhi back in it must have been 2019 or something mm-hmm. like that um because i read an article about <laughs> about the the pollution in delhi and the air quality oh one lamp went out there that's not good let's just kidding. anyways <laughs> <laughs> let's just roll um no i read yeah. an article uh, about um the the uh, the air quality and mm-hmm. the pollution in India and it said something like if you stay one day in Delhi um, it's uh, equivalent to smoking like I don't know what the amount was but like twenty thirty or forty cigarettes per day if you stay outside if you stay the if day. you stay outside okay. uh, the entire day in Delhi something like uh, that uh, okay that's and for bad. and for that reason I decided not to go okay um, okay. And uh, yeah, it, it wasn't it wasn't really good this time either. No, no. you can just see it every single morning. You yeah. wake up and you look look out look outside. But, it's yeah. just foggy. And it's it's actually it's one of the things I miss the most when we are away. Mm-hmm. It's like the air we have in them. Exactly. Like it's just yeah. it's just so different. Yeah. Like it's it's fresh in some way also because of the colder temperatures of yeah. course. But it's yeah. like. One of the nicest feelings is when you like leave the plane in Copenhagen exactly. and you just take that first breath of air. It's yeah. 
also because we're used to it and everything it just feels like mm. home and like yeah, yeah it's, it's colder but it's fresh and yeah, I, yeah. it just i mean i guess copenhagen is not the best no air probably not either, probably not but it, it's definitely different so different also because of the temperature and everything yeah, yeah. Uh, i actually i said the exact same thing to um to some of the guys on on the flight today mm. That's one thing I really miss about Denmark. I've also been in, in, in Dubai for, for quite a while now, so I haven't been home in Denmark for yeah. a while. Yeah. That That's the one thing I really miss, yeah. like clean water yeah. and clean air. Yeah. Um, yeah. So when I next time I'm going to Denmark, I will visit my parents mm. um, for a week. Um, so I, I, I can't wait to like step outside yeah. in, the, in, the, in the garden and like s- smelling that like fresh yeah. air the grass and everything that's just yeah. that's just so good about the about denmark and, and yeah. many places in europe i would say yeah definitely definitely yeah so uh so yeah, yeah. but um i'm also thrilled to be here in indonesia for sure for I'm, sure uh, i'm excited yeah. i'm excited like in the start i wasn't planning to go actually i was only planning to do the first two but then i've kind of thought like with my ranking of course it made sense for me to play now that i can get in and try mm-hmm. to get some points but also as we talked about many times, I will retire, so I was also like, maybe this is the final chance to play in Estores and Iron and visit Indonesia. Because right now I'm not high enough ranked to enter Indonesia Open later this year. So I thought it would make good sense to have like one, uh, one at least one final time here. Yeah. I will go here in the summer if I qualify, but yeah, yeah. we'll see about that. We never know with you. It's, we never uh, it's an ongoing like... Uh, quest for you to stay in, in, <laughs> yeah. in the tournaments yeah. and <laughs> fighting for We never life. know. I mean, I remember, I don't know if I said this on the last podcast, but I remember when you turned 35. Mm, yeah. But now, And we were like, yeah, I think we spoke about that one. Yeah. Old, <laughs> yeah. But you're still here too. Now I'm later. older. Now yeah. I'm older. We'll but find then, out. Yeah. Should we get into talking about what actually happened on court in mm. India? Yes, but before we do that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, one important thing. I think we should just mention once again mm. uh, mm. the clothes that we are wearing right now. Both of us is rocking the. The black uh, cap today. You are rocking the white T-shirt. I'm rocking the black one. Yes. Uh, the basic T-shirt, just with the TBE logo on. So, guys, we recently uh, launched merchandise. If you if you didn't know, um, so you can go to the and uh, support us, support the podcast, and it's the lamp is back. Yeah, um, that's a sign. I feel yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the light is shining on us yeah. in our web shop. So, uh, so if you want to support the podcast. Um, Help us out um, so that we don't have to do iPhone recordings so we can uh, afford to hire a camera then. Yeah, get some better quality mics. Like We Stuff got a like lot that. of comments <laughs> about the mics, so like the, the cord is not that long. That's why we hold, we're holding it yeah. last time. But now we try something different. So if you want to support us in terms of like getting better equipment, better, uh, yeah, just everything please please go and that buy would, some of the stuff that would be great and it's yeah. cool too and uh we have one exclusive t-shirt on the shop it's an asia 2023 tour t-shirt yeah it's, it's quite cool it yeah. has the date of the four tournaments that we are playing here in the beginning of the year um and the destinations as well yeah i think it's quite cool so go and check it out guys grab an uh, an item if you want to if you don't want to it's totally fine yeah. podcast is still free but, um, and still, if there's any item you miss in the shop, please let us know because we will have uh, more items added later on. Definitely. So we want to figure out what you guys want the most and then we'll try to uh, accommodate your wishes. 100%. So let's just uh, wrap up India Open. Yep. Um, yep, yep. The second tournament uh, of the year. Um, the finals ended today. Mm-hmm. So we know all the results and everything. Um, and obviously there's like one main story there's one main story uh we talked about victor dominating and he has been dominating for so long uh but today he lost yeah which pretty was crazy. Uh, yeah pretty crazy he lost to kunlabut vititsan from thailand mm. the free time world junior champion yeah pretty impressive that's impressive i, I don't think anyone has ever done that before no i think maybe ratchanak in women's singles but yeah in men's singles mm-hmm. i'm not sure maybe she only did two actually so right. yeah I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but yeah, very impressive. Actually, when I entered the room here, you were watching the final, yeah, and I had. Yeah. To, I was watching it live earlier today as well. So yeah, I yeah, just I wanted to see some uh, some highlights mm-hmm. uh, to see how it uh, played out. Yeah. I was like, I, I didn't even watch it. I was like 100 percent certain that Victor yeah, would yeah. would would win. Um, but yeah, every once in a while, everyone loses, even mm-hmm. though uh, 
he seemed like untouchable. Yeah, yeah. I think like one thing is that Victor he had this one game point in the first game. Like he was behind all the way until I think fifteen. He was down three, four, five points. Then he caught up at fifteen, got a small lead, and actually had a game point at twenty nineteen. And I kind of feel like had he wrapped it up on that one, he probably would have won it in straight sets because he had the more difficult side of the of the whole uh, of the court in the first game. Uh, and on that game point, Kunlevut he hits the like the net yeah. and it tumbles over. So yeah. it's like it's a very small difference. Uh, yeah. It makes yeah. But that's that's the game. That's how that is the game. That is on game. the days where you where those like very tight um, decisions go your way. Or, exactly. Yeah, those yeah. are the days where you end up winning uh, matches like yeah, that. Yeah. And it really comes down to like minor minor things yeah. sometimes. But I think it was really like he showed a lot of mental toughness in the third game, uh, Kunlevut, uh, to to be able to beat him because he was definitely working hard in the f- those first two a uh, couple of games, and I think. Like if you look at the past year, so one thing Victor has really dominated players on is like the physical uh, side of it. So like to just keep on going in that third game, even though Kunlu would for sure spend more energy because he was the guy just keeping things downwards, playing the back line every now and then, but definitely working a lot harder. It's it's not that easy to just keep on uh, keep on going. No, and I mean, you could say that Victor had a tough week last week because mm. he won the tournament but I would actually say that Kunlevut had mm. at least as tough or maybe even tougher he, he played uh, yeah. that, that match against against Koda in the semi-final which mm. was more than 100 minutes he played a long one in the quarter-final against Lou last week as well yeah so he I, he, I think he, actually he spent more minutes on court than Victor last prob- week. probably also because I think Victor got a war goal yeah last, last week in the, the second round first round second round yeah against second Darren. round and in this tournament, he got Wargo, uh, half Wargo in the quarterfinal, right? Yeah, you're probably right. So that's yeah. that's pretty impressive. And I mean, he's only 21 and he also, I mean, <laughs> he defeated me, which is uh, kind of crazy as well. <laughs> that's the biggest achievement. Yeah, that's the biggest achievement, no. Yeah, so no. He, he has, he has had uh, two tough weeks. Um, I'm actually uh, going to play against him uh, next week. Yeah, as well. how, did this you, week. how did you feel again against him? In, uh, you played him in the second round. Yeah, I did. I played played against him in the second round. Twenty one seventeen in the final game. Yeah, I won the first game quite convincingly. I mm-hmm. think I think the score was like ten or something. Twenty one ten, and then I lost the second game quite convincingly. Twenty one twelve or something, and then I got seventeen in, in the third game. Okay. Um. Yeah, I mean, for me, who was just coming back basically mm-hmm. from no the yeah, yeah, it's gone again. Gone again. Yeah. Just coming back from from an injury. I mean, I'm just happy about every minute that I can get on court. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, I had I had mi- mixed emotions after the match. I was mm-hmm. both happy but also a bit disappointed. Um, I felt like I lost um, like my like my I couldn't really f- keep like maintaining the focus. Mm-hmm. I, I was getting so frustrated, so yeah. I was like in and out of my of my zone. When it comes to my focus, I make I was making a bit too many mistakes and stuff. Okay. Yeah. So obviously uh, he's uh, as we can see he's <laughs> yeah. very strong at the moment. Yeah, so yeah. so I mean looking back uh, on the matches, it it might was a good uh, performance by mm. me to mm. to get kind of close. Mm. Um, but yeah, still some things that I wasn't really satisfied with. Um, but I think. What Kunlevud is really good at, we haven't really spoke that much no. about Kunlevud. It's more been Kodai, um, yeah. but Kunlevud is 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 similar to Kodai in some ways because mm-hmm. he really likes to to run. He likes to play some long rallies, yeah. um, and he's really stable and in good good shape since yeah. he can play so long matches yeah. and long yeah. rallies. Yeah. His defense is really good. Yeah. Um, so he's definitely very difficult to score against. Yeah, like it's yeah. I uh, think you could see that again today that Victor yeah. was actually struggling to 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 getting the the, the shadow culture before. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I think he, he's also like the way he's playing. He's showing that he's not afraid of being in the defense. I know again today he was keeping things more downwards, but even when he was on the more difficult side, he was still using the the baseline as well. Like. He, he's not that afraid of giving away initiative every now and then because he's yeah, I think he's very yeah. good in the counter uh, like yeah. his counter defense mm. is, is very good he's very good at always giving an angle like crossing it even flat cross or yeah just the short one so 
Yeah, I would say that that's that's one thing that uh, Momota was probably the only player that could do against Victor. Mm. Actually, was able to absorb his uh, his yeah. offense. Yeah, no mm. one can do that, and mm. that really forces pl- forces everyone to play super offensive. Yeah. But the problem there is that Vixer's defense is so uh, yeah. solid as well. Yeah. So you just end up running back and forth. Yeah. And that's like until just a you, slow death. Until you don't want to do that anymore, yeah. then you try to do a lift. Yeah. Bang. And yeah. then, yeah. then the rally is over. But yeah. Momoza was actually the only one who could play the baseline yeah. and then be able to, to stand in the mm. defense as well. Mm. Um, and Kunla would maybe can do that a, a little bit as well. He definitely could today. Yeah. He definitely could today. I didn't watch the second game where he lost 21-10, but uh, yeah, I lost my connection actually. But okay. I think in the other two sets, I don't think Victor hit a lot of winners actually. No. No. Did, were the, I mean, the playing conditions in general mm. uh, in India was super slow. Yeah. The shuttle clocks yeah. were very, very slow. Was it faster in the final? It looked a little bit faster uh, to Maybe me. a little bit, yeah. It looked like there was a little bit more drift compared mm-hmm. to the other days. Because I think on the other days, there was also some drift. There was a difference from the two sides. But I, I think it looked like in the final that one side was quite a bit faster mm-hmm. uh, than the other. Because yeah, the first game, Victor had a lot of trouble actually finding the baseline, like yeah. finding the right lane. Yeah. I think he lifted out maybe four or five times. And then he started lifting a little bit too short because he was afraid of yeah. lifting them out. And I think that also gave Kunlabut the chance to actually hit a few more winners than he would usually uh, be able to. Um, and actually, like we've been talking a few times about like who is better, like Victor at his prime or Lin Dan or Lee Chung Wei and guys. And that's like one area where I always felt like Lin Dan and Lee Chung Wei is superior to anyone else, maybe at the same level as Momota actually. Like finding the length on the lift. I always felt like when you play those guys, no matter like how strong the wind or drift is in the hole, they could always just lift to the baseline. Mm. I, I don't get how they do it. And okay. like it, to me, it's nice to see that a guy like Victor, who I find to be almost like inhumane, like like an alien, mm-hmm. like he can also struggle with it sometimes. Uh, yeah. But I always remember those two guys and also Momota at his best. Like they could just yeah. make a lift and it would be right on the line every time. Yeah. yeah. But it, it is definitely for me to see still one of Victor's like very, very good things in his game that yeah, his, yeah, his yeah. lifts and his length on his mm. on his uh, strokes to the baseline in general is, I mean, so yeah. close to the line every single time. Yeah. yeah. Um, he was just struggling with it there today. Yeah. And I mean, if you have played four matches with one, uh, sp- I mean, one speed, mm. and then they change it to the final, that is of course not easy to to adapt to yeah, suddenly. Yeah, but yeah. those are the terms. You yeah. never really know in this sport. No. <laughs> no, 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 that's true. Yeah. I felt like it was the same in Malaysia also, that it changed from day to day. Like the first couple of days, it was very strong, the drift, mm-hmm. and then there was all of a sudden that yeah. day, exactly. not a lot of drift. So we just, yeah, you got to get used to it and you got to be able to adapt. Yeah. So that's uh, that was crazy. Uh, Kunlabud, 21 years old, right? Won yeah, the, I think the India right. Open, defeated uh, Big Siracles in the final. It'll big, be, big surprise. Yeah. It would be say. interesting to see if he's going to be like the guy trying to push Victor a little bit more. You never, know. Not, you yeah. never know. You never know. He definitely has a bright future, that's for sure. Yeah. Same with Kodai and uh, I feel like Kodai and, and Kunlavut has like, I mean, I think last year we were probably talking a bit more about Loken Yu and Lakshya Sen mm. and um, yeah. but now there's a, there's a few more guys coming up and yeah. I think they are around the same age. Yeah, Koda and Kulabu, they I know they played be. some junior matches against each other, so yeah. they must be within one year. Yeah, but I think Lakshya is actually the same age. Okay. He was it's a pretty strong men's singles yeah. uh, group. It is. Yeah. Um, a few other finals today that uh, didn't get to play because of food poisoning. Food poisoning in the Chinese team. Uh, I'm not sure. I, I know in the mixed doubles they pulled out. So Wang Yilu and uh, Huang Dongping pulled out. And I know it was Wang Yilu who got sick. Um, I'm not sure in the women's doubles who pulled out. Uh, like of course it was the Chinese, but I don't know if it was uh, Chen Kung Chen or Jie Yifan, uh, but one of them got sick. Okay. And Chen Yufei, who pulled out in the quarterfinals, she also got sick. So yeah, okay. there's a few of the Chinese players. And as I said, my roommate Mikkel Mikkelsen also. So yeah, a few people got hit by. Uh, he was like, uh, he just arrived. You went and, and got one one meal from one, outside the one hotel, meal. and he was throwing up for for the whole week. Yeah, it's yeah. crazy. It was a quite nice uh, meal actually. But yeah, <laughs> I don't I don't think he's gonna go back to yeah. that that place. Okay, 
I mean, the thing about Indian food is that it tastes so good. Yeah. But I have also experienced like multiple times getting a really bad stomach. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's just it's not. I've I, I mean I've tried that also in other countries. I've actually yeah. tried it here in mm. Jakarta plenty of times as well. Yeah. So I don't know if it's it, if it has to do with uh, some bacteria that we are not used yeah, to maybe. coming from Denmark or if it's the the, the spices. I mean, yeah. it's the food is way spicier than than what we are used to. Yeah. Yeah, because it's not like obviously we didn't go to like a small place where the like where the hygiene is bad or anything. Mm-hmm. Like we went to a really nice restaurant, lots of people there, also tourists yeah. and stuff. So it's not like we weren't careful, but yeah, Mikkel got hit anyway. One, one thing that I'm, one thing that I never do is I never use the the tap water. Mm-hmm. Obviously, mm-hmm. Uh, I never uh, have ice cubes. Yeah. in the water because I, I don't know do they use yeah, the, that that's not exclusively for India right you don't do that no basically I, in no in, anywhere no. in Asia or? no 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 I, w- yeah. I don't think so no, no. usually I would uh, avoid the ice cubes no. I would uh, avoid the tap water um, so one thing that I've been thinking about and I don't know you probably don't know the answer either what what do they do with the salad, for instance? The yeah. Vegetables. Do they wash that in the tap water, or do it, they filter the water or something? Yeah, or? I don't know. It was one of the first advices I got from Stain Pillerson, the guy who's now the BWF commentator. He mm-hmm. used to be the yeah the head coach of the national team, and one of the first advices he gave me when we went to Asia was like stay away from tap water, stay away from fresh salad because he okay. was afraid that it was being washed in uh, in tap water. I have no idea if it no. is, and I do eat fresh salad here every now and then but uh, yeah, I remember he told me that 15 years ago and it's uh, yeah, still in my mind so I don't know what they do how they uh, I'm sure at like the bigger restaurants they will make sure to not use tap water but yeah yeah hopefully yeah, I, I mean, don't know hopefully that would that would make a uh, good sense yeah. it's just it's just so difficult I mean one day I had uh, I had uh, I had some rice with butter chicken and mm. some some broccoli or something mm. Uh, and I felt just fine the day yeah. after. Like fresh broccoli or uh, like boiled? No, I think it was boiled. Yeah, or something so if like it's that. boiled, then it doesn't. Really it was. It was a day either. here last week in India. Yeah. And then the the day after, I had the exact same order, mm-hmm. and I was up all night on the toilet, yeah. Yeah. like four or five times. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just like, what is it then? I yeah. mean, I'm always checking if the chicken is uh, is cooked for long enough and stuff yeah. like that, yeah. and yeah. everything seems fine. So. Yeah, it's it's just yeah, it's just, it's just weird. Difficult. Yeah, I I have no idea what it is. No. But it tastes so yeah. good, so it's uh, it's it's hard to just uh, sit on the room and eat oatmeal and uh, bananas and. Uh, it's a bit too boring. Yeah, it bit is too boring. Bit too boring. But yeah, so those two finals were cancelled. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we just got yeah. to track. Yeah, Akane Yamaguchi. Yes. Didn't win the final. No, because who did? An Young yeah, from you, Korea. Your favorite badminton player, right? Indeed. Yeah, I didn't watch the final. Did you? No, no, I didn't. Yeah, but it was a repeat of the final from last week. Uh, yeah, I think they played the final as well, right? In Malaysia, they did. I just saw the scores that Yamaguchi won the first set again, uh, and then Ansi Young actually dominated. Looking at the scores from there, but again, we didn't watch it, so it's pretty hard to say like yeah. anything specific. They but played a lot of finals against each they other. They have already played each other yeah. so many times, so, yeah. so it's crazy. And I, I think it's pretty obvious that Ansi Young is like up and coming and I, I, I just I love her attitude that it looks like she really wants to be like number one mm-hmm. like uh, there's, yeah. there's no bullshit and even like when she loses I, I kind of feel like it, it pisses her off <laughs> like she wants to be the best yeah. and when she wins she's always like quite expressive in her celebration and like uh, showing yeah, yeah I'm number mm. one and stuff like that I think it's quite it's yeah. it's not that normal to see from uh, from one of the Asian players to be that expressive in the emotions. So it's, it's I, cool. I, I kind of like that. It's yeah. definitely way way different from uh, Akane. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's the complete opposite. I complete saw opposite. I saw a, a super fun video online. I think she defeated uh, Carolina Marino mm-hmm. right in quarterfinal or something like yeah, that. Yeah. Um, and you know, right after you have shaken hand with the um, with your opponent and mm-hmm. the umpires. Usually there are some some photographers sitting there. They want to take a photo of you, and yeah, I think yeah. they called her like yeah. Akane, Akane, and she turned around and she was like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, of, course. Just, "Of course, she didn't really knew what to do." Yeah. I mean, obviously, if the people uh, only listening to this episode, they don't know what I just did. Yeah. 
But she was just uh, like, giving like a, a hand signal, uh, two like, fingers in the air. Yeah, I the mean, peace sign. The peace yeah. sign, yeah. I mean, <laughs> it was like she had no idea what yeah. really to do, and she's just that's just the way she is. I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, seems, I love her too. It's just it's like yeah. it's very different. It so. seems like she is uh, shy, quite shy. Yeah, yeah. Maybe like a bit introvert yeah. actually. Yeah. Did, that, did, that's my best guess. I've never spoken to her, so no, yeah, no, no. Uh, Did you see uh, the video of Li Shi Feng, uh, the men singles, when he beat, uh, I think, Li Shi Jia? No. No, no. he was also, uh, that's gone again, but he was also like celebrating, and then, as you said, all the photographers at the side of the, uh, of the court wanted to have photos. And he was just like posing in so many different ways, <laughs> like ending up also just standing like in this ready position <laughs> okay. and like doing this with his arm. And, like he was just, okay. a, uh, it was a lot of fun. Oh, he was fun. really taking it to a new okay. level. So he was, he was quite happy with that win. I think. <laughs> there's, there's, there are many, many, many funny Amazon celebrations. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've seen some like highlights, some uh, edited videos on YouTube mm. with, with Amazon celebrations. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. The one. The one with the Chinese men's doubles, I think it was. Yeah, that's uh, the best one. In that's Thomas Cup, where he's trying, Cup to rip off, he's trying to rip yeah. off his shirt, but he just can't get it off because it's so sweaty. <laughs> he's just fighting with it for like 10 seconds and yeah. then he gives off something. Yeah. It's so fun. Yeah. Uh, people should go find that one. It's from the semi final of Thomas Cup 2018. China, oh, Indonesia. Obviously, Anna's uh, score, Brasmussen, our, our colleague from Denmark, he also uh, has a. Uh, has some good ones. Yeah, breaking a racket. That's my absolute favorite of yeah. all time. Yeah. When 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 Denmark won the semi final. Yeah. Semi final in Thomas Cup, mm. 2016. He was so ecstatic <laughs> that he just <laughs> destroyed his racket. Um, not because he was angry, obviously because he was super super happy and he just couldn't control his emotions. <laughs> Yeah, and he was actually forced to to write like a, an apology. Yeah, Yonix wasn't really happy. With no, him. no, 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 they weren't. Which I believe is ridiculous. Yeah, it is. It is, and he did it again in twenty eight. Was it in eighteen? No, no, he did it one more time. Uh, I don't think he did it. I think he was. He did it. He, he did, did it. it again. He did it again. <laughs> and then, then, because I think it was when he did it the second time, like Yonix were really pissed with him, yeah, okay. and he had to apologize. Okay. So it and was after the second time that he had to write the apology. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then I remember we tried to kind of get him to do it again yeah. uh, this time at yeah, Thomas yeah, Cup yeah. when he made a comeback in the quarterfinal <laughs> against Korea. We were like, "Yeah, break the racket, break the racket, come on, come on." <laughs> Yeah, he didn't do it, but like the thing I find ridiculous about the fact he had to apologize because obviously ugh, I understand they don't want him to show that like we break rackets and we need to take care of our stuff. But like if you watch tennis, did you see the rally from Australian Open between Andy Murray and uh, this um, guy Ko uh, Kokinakis, I think his name is? From I think that's his name, but no, yeah, I didn't no. watch it. They had one rally in the third set where Murray, he saves four smashes and ends up winning the point and breaks on that point. And then this guy, Kokinakis, he just like really rips his racket mm. apart. So it just explodes into, yeah, I don't know how many pieces. And I'm like 100% sure, he also plays with Yonex, that mm. he's not gonna give like any public apology. Yeah. And just in general in tennis, like they shout, they curse, they can yeah break rackets, they can do anything. And I don't want to encourage it, but it's just like, I also enjoy to see the raw emotion of people mm. that just get annoyed. Definitely, and, and I feel like like there's there's almost no room for it in badminton. Like if you oh, shout no. anything on court, the umpire will be like, "Hey, hey, hey be quiet, mm. behave, behave." Yeah. So, I like I be feel careful like that you don't face the opponent while you yeah, yeah, shout yeah them exactly, like exactly. I feel like we need to find a better balance. Uh, yeah. So of course, not just let everyone do exactly what they want, but. I feel like we can have a bit more room for uh, for emotional outbursts. When I'm scrolling through my Facebook, for instance, mm. there pop, there are popping up so many of these these videos where tennis players are arguing with the mm. umpire, mm -hmm. or it's like they're almost trying to sell that part of the yeah. sport. Yeah. I mean, I don't. I also see like crazy good rallies and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. But it's so often like this guy. I mean, uh, the other day I saw Djokovic was. Uh, there was a fan in the stadium mm -hmm. who was annoying him, yeah. and that was like the video. Uh, yeah. And there was um, he wanted to go to the bathroom, and mm. that was the video. It, yeah. it wasn't really like a good rally or anything. No. no. Um, so I, th I feel like they kind of want to show that mm. 
part of the of yeah. the game and yeah. the, and and that side of the personalities. Mm. Um, that's I mean that for me to see that's that's super that's super cool. Yeah. Every every time you go up to to the umpire and, and try to actually talk about something, mm-hmm. yeah. just says get back, get, yeah. get play back, on, play, play on. on. I yeah. mean, yeah. but I also feel like it's not even possible to talk to some of the umpires, like because they're not that fluent in English. No, no, perhaps. No. Yeah. Um, but I, for sure, like that part also sells tickets. Like yeah. a guy like Nick Kyrgios in tennis, I know he likes. He's very di- di- like he uh, divides divides people, yeah, yeah a lot. Uh, and obviously, he has a lot of uh, behavioral traits that are not great. Uh, but he just he sells tickets because people like they hear about him, and either you love him or you mm. hate him. And it, it's harder to get those kind of athletes in badminton yeah. because it's just kind of like. Umpires stop it before anything really, uh, really happens. Yeah, and it's. I mean, yeah. I mean, I definitely agree. I've been watching tennis just because of uh, of Kyrgios. Of Kyrgios. Yeah. yeah. Um, I haven't. I have never really watched a lot of tennis, but I think was it in Wimbledon where he did well? He made the final of yeah. Wimbledon last year. I was. Uh, I was following following him there. Um, never really watched tennis uh, yeah. that much before. Yeah. Obviously, we also now have Holger Rune. Mm. Who's very good, so it's it's fun to follow him yeah. as well. Yeah, and he's also known for quite yeah, a bit of Yeah, he's also like uh, splitting the waters a yeah. bit. Yeah. But you need to understand like it's really also it really also comes down to difference in in the cultures mm. where mm. the where the sports are yeah. really popular. True. True. I mean, you don't. I see feel that, like yeah. tennis is more like America. That's yeah. more yeah. wild in mm. in some sense, where badminton is more Asia, mm. where the I mean, some of the uh, they control their emotions a lot more, actually. Yeah, and I mean, it, many of the the Asian cultures uh, is is really about showing respect, yeah. Um, yeah. keeping like a, a good, good attitude and stuff like yeah. that. And so it's not Definitely. it's 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 not really it's it's frowned upon mm. to to act uh, that yeah. way. So I think yeah. that's why badminton would. Yeah. Rather okay. keep keep it calm and keep it like a gentleman sport. Um, yeah. No interaction uh, interactions with the opponent in a bad yeah. way, in a negative way, and the same with the umpires yeah. and stuff. Yeah, so that's I guess good, that's, that's a good point. I that's guess that's point. why you don't see it that much. Mm-hmm. And again, we we don't. Uh, I I'm sure none of us is like um, uh, encouraging people to break rackets or mm-hmm. discuss with the umpire and stuff like that. Obviously, we we want uh, everyone to behave. Well, yeah. not that I'm I'm not able to control myself. No, 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 uh, no, no, no. Yeah. I, I, I know you can also have some outbursts at, at times. It happens. Um, but for me to see, it's just factual, correct. That is just entertaining to watch. Mm. It, is, <laughs> I mean, it, is, it is. It can be good or bad behavior. Yeah. It's just fun to yeah. watch. Yeah. I actually had, um, to be honest, I, I was kind of furious in the match against Kulnavut last week. Why? Um, I wasn't really happy with the umpire, and mm. I felt like he really. Once again. I felt like he disliked me from the, from the start of the <laughs> okay. match. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah, there there was a few things. I mean, at a, at a kind of important point uh, in the second game, mm. I did that thing where he was making a very tight net spin. Yeah. I tried to spin it back. I got it over. Yeah. And he was going to kill it. I put my racket up in front, mm. and I got it back and won the point. Mm. And he told me that I was obstructing his obstructing sh- his shots his net kill and I was yeah. like no he, he yeah. was totally able to do it and stuff yeah, like yeah. that but the score was just like 11 12 mm. it could have been nice to get to 11 uh, 12 12s yeah, uh, yeah. anyways then in the third game 13 14 I did a short serve mm. for me to see very harmless yeah I got called for like Falter, too, so high, too high, yeah. too high. At thirteen, fourteen in the deciding game. But that's not game. the umpire. That's the service judge. That's the service judge. Okay. So the so I felt I, f- I, f- uh, I felt like it was free yeah. against one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> so yeah. So yeah. And then it was just like Kunlabud. He he did a net kill. Uh, Nineteen seventeen in the third game. He hit me right between the eyes. Okay. And he, and, and obviously it was my own fault because I was like just like jumping up trying to to yeah. save it. Yeah. And the umpire didn't even ask, are you okay, Andrews? Yeah. Nothing. Uh, nothing uh, at all. Okay. So afterwards, I really wanted to argue. <laughs> yeah. so, so so backstage, I was like, I mean, I was furious. I was trying to talk to the umpire. He was just like smiling, uh, walking away from me. Mm. Then the, uh, the organizer of the tournament came and I was like, um, 
Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I wanted, I really wanted to to have a discussion about some some things that was going on on the yeah, court. Yeah. This whole time wasting thing yeah. once again, mm-hmm. um, where I, sometimes I have a feeling like they are really, really after me, mm-hmm. and I I know I have a reputation yeah, for yeah, for yeah. taking a long time. Yeah. Jill Clark is talking about it yeah, every yeah. opportunity she gets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and and then I, I was like. Um, at 8-5 in the first game, we had played five minutes, mm. and me and Kunla would, both of us were ready to, one of us was obviously ready to serve, the other one ready to, to re- receive the serve. And then your umpire called us mm. and said, you need to hurry up. And we both, me and Kunla would looked at each other like, what? Yeah. What What now? Yeah. I mean, yeah. we have played literally five minutes and yeah. the score scores 8-5. Yeah. Yeah. It's not that crazy. Yeah. Um, the day before, I was playing against Toma Junior Popov, mm. and uh, um, all due respect to Toma, but he was really also wasting he a lot of time on, yeah. on the court. Yeah. Um, the umpire didn't say anything, yeah. and and I just feel like had if that had been me, yeah. I'm just quite sure that they would yeah. have been over me uh, instantly. There's definitely a chance that because you have the reputation, that umpires are more alert to mm-hmm. it. So like. They just need to see it once with you, and then they're already focused on it. And, and that's the thing I yeah. fear. Yeah. That that's the thing I, I really don't like. Mm. And it kind of like um, I got that com- confirmed a bit when okay. I talked to the organizer because uh, yeah. I wanted to to talk with him, get a discussion about some stuff, and he was just like, "I know, go on, go on." Mm. It's like, mm. why can't we talk about it? Yeah. And, and yeah. I mean. Yeah. I mean, figure it out. I mean, am I wrong here, or mm. or is there something that young bike umpires could do better? And he was just like smiling, trying to get me away and say and said, Anas, Anas, we know you, we know you. Okay. Yeah. And now and yeah. I was like, yeah. exactly, exactly. That's the yeah. issue. Yeah. I mean, you you instantly have this perception of yeah. me yeah. being this way, and I feel like sometimes that's why the umpires is uh, doing the way they mm. do uh, yeah. when I'm on court. I don't want to play the victim or anything. No, 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 uh, but I mean, it, it makes sense. You should still be judged in the same way at the start of every match than you're... It should be a new match every yeah, single exactly, time. Exactly, um, that's very true, that's very true. And I feel like I've experienced multiple times where I'm actually not the one time wasting. Mm. Um, anyways, yeah. I mean, I've never seen the umpires before. Yeah. I have no idea who they are. Yeah, so it's not like he has a personal agenda against you. It's, it's Hopefully not. probably Hopefully more not. because the perception is there that you are, you are a time waster. Basically, I, it it really reminded me about when I was younger. I mm. mean, uh, I've always been like a, a problem child. Okay. Uh, yeah. My parents always, ne- they never believed in me. They always believed in my brother Casper. Yeah. With good reason. Um. Or? So so Casper was definitely taking advantage of me <laughs> okay. because he knew that. Yeah. yeah. Um, and we. Were, I hope Casper is watching. This. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> me and Casper were, was also. I mean, we were playing so many uh, matches against each other. Uh, net games and uh, yeah. just always wanted to beat each other obviously we, we're yeah. brothers so it could be in any game not yeah. only badminton yeah. but I remember something Casper did that really pissed me off when we were younger we were playing a net game and I was about to win which was unusual okay. Casper was better than me he was three years older yeah. um, and then he, he in on my match point he uh, made a net drop into the net and I mean even before he hit the shutter he ran into the cafeteria where my mom and dad was and he said, I won, I won, I won. <laughs> and I was like, no, I was like running behind him. Um, and, and I was like, no, I won, I won. Uh, and, and, and my parents were like, Anas, Anas, we know you, we know you. So that was, it really reminded me okay. of, uh, of, of when I was younger. Yeah. Um, and that sentence really hurts me. Uh, it's, it's, right. It was so annoying. I'll remember. I I'll, I'll try to find a good place to <laughs> use that against you. Like Anas, Anas, I know you. I mean, I know you. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Anyways, well, I mean, I've, um, it was a good story. I feel like wasn't great it? Story. Oh. great story, great story. Great <laughs> story. I I was laughing for sure. I don't know like how we got sidetracked to there, but it was uh, no. good. There one of the good ones. But anyway, with like the rest of the Indian Open finals, we didn't watch them. No. So I think it would make no sense to like go into details about it. Um, yeah, I just agree. say congrats to all the winners. Uh, the agree. young Chinese men's doubles pair looks like they could be like one of the new top top pairs. Yeah, they won Japan Open. Now they won again here in India Open, and they are really doing well. Interesting. Uh, yeah, didn't watch the match. So yeah, Hans Christian, 
What's yep. your expectation for Indonesia Masters Indonesia 2023? Masters. Well, I'm playing uh, this guy from Malaysia. Mm. <clears throat> Se Young. Yeah. I don't know how to pronounce it still. It sounds like I'm saying Anse Young, the women singles, but it is it's a men's close. singles it's from close. Malaysia. Well, it's going to be tough, but uh, my goal is to win that match because I need the points. So uh, if I can keep my performance at the same level as I played in Malaysia and uh, India, I think I have a good chance of winning. Uh, but he's also playing amazing. He almost beat Kodai uh, last week. Won the first game and was nineteen fifteen up, um, but yeah, like, what of course I want to play well, but it doesn't really give me any points. I cannot really use it for much. I already showed that my level when I play well is good enough to compete. Uh, so yeah, I would be lying if I said that I would be satisfied if I just played well again and lost in a close match because it doesn't really take me anywhere. So, what's your expectations to the Indonesian uh, crowd? That they're amazing as always. Yeah. I actually feel like, uh, like I've always felt popular here, but I feel like my popularity has been growing a little bit coming here already. Is it because of the Banton experience? I think it is. Last I time we were is. here, we did some pretty good episodes. Actually, did you notice in India, the crowd was shouting, come on, Banton experience. They no. did in, in my match against the, yeah when I played Loki Yu from uh, Singapore there were people like okay. come on badminton experience <laughs> okay I thought it was amazing wow. amazing and a lot of the guys that I took photos with there also said like yeah thanks for all the episodes and we're watching it every time so that was really awesome. cool really cool so I'm hoping for that as well here in Indonesia shout out to to you guys out there yeah shout definitely. out to India do you know this guy that's one that's always saying like get PV Sindhu on, get PV Sindhu on the show. I feel like there's so many. Yeah, that, but there's that. one that's like very persistent and it's doing it all the time. And I got a photo taken with him and he was like, yeah, I know, I'm sorry. I'm just <laughs> excited. And yeah, so that was cool. That was cool. Awesome. Uh, but yeah, I expect, I, I spoke to uh, yeah one of the organizers here and he said they already sold a lot of tickets. So I'm just excited to play in, in the store and I, and again, like even if it's just like a 20% full arena, yeah. the, the, like the noise level there is just yeah. unbelievable. It's, it's insane. I've yeah. I've tried a few times um, playing like one of the very last matches mm. in the store and I am yeah. so late on the day, um, and you you kind of have this expectation that it's always full of mm. people, mm. Um, but let's say it's it's uh, not an Indonesian player, it's mm. me versus a guy from Hong Kong or something, mm. um, and it's very late, then there can be like only. I think I experienced maybe like 200 people only, mm. but those 200 people is still are still extremely loud. It's like 2,000 in Denmark. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, yeah. it's always it's an enjoyable experience. Yeah. Last time here in the summer, it it was the I mean it was the worst time I've ever had. Mm. I mean there's nothing I love. Oh more. yeah, because you couldn't there's play. There's nothing yeah. I love more than playing in and I've yeah, yeah. done very well here. Yeah. It's uh, it's it's my favorite place. That's for sure mm. to play badminton. And I was just here, injured, wasn't able to compete, but I was still over there watching some mm. games and stuff. And it was just, I mean, killing me. It, yeah. was, it was so tough. Yeah. So um, now we're only a few days out. I don't want to jinx anything, but <laughs> yeah. it seems like I might be able to play. <laughs> Hopefully. I, I we have training tomorrow, so yeah. don't do anything stupid. I mean, yeah. you never know. <laughs> you never know. I, don't, I never want to jinx anything. I've been able to play for the last few weeks and everything's been going well. So. Yeah. Maybe I'll step on court here again. The only Stora boy. Yeah, we need to get him back. <laughs> we need to get him back. But yeah, I remember it was a tough, uh, tough few weeks here last yeah. year. It wasn't fun. It but you're back. Fun. You're all good to go. It will I'm be. Back. It will be fine. Yeah. It will be fine. I'm back. So I yeah. got my nasi goreng and uh, already already received uh, a gift from uh, the incredible fans. Everything, yeah. everything's good. Everything is back to normal. So yeah. now we just need you guys to shout for the badminton experience. That could be awesome. Maybe even we will see a piece of merch. Yeah, uh, I think maybe they won't have had time to actually uh, receive the shipment yet. Okay. There's a bit of delivery when they have to ship it to Indonesia. But yeah. maybe with a bit of luck, yeah. then perhaps. We are definitely looking forward to, to meeting you guys over in the arena. Um, cheer for us, that yes, would be amazing. Please. Shout our names, all the Bamsen experience, either one is uh, is perfect. Even um, if I play, you can shout for Anna. Yeah. it's still great, it's still great. <laughs> do that. Uh, if I play, I would, I mean, I would appreciate if you do not mention Hans Christian's name. But anyways, um, I think that's it for this episode. It's kind of late here uh, it is, it is, this evening. Um, ten. Yeah, it's 10, so I think we'll wrap this episode up. Um, I'm glad that we got it done. 
Definitely. Um, I'm, uh, it was I, a pleasure as always. Yeah, it was. I hope that we can, uh, on after this week, like do another one so that we can uh, wrap Hopefully. up this week as well. Hopefully. So uh, thanks so much for watching or listening, guys. Uh, as always, please remember to subscribe to the Banton Experience on YouTube. Follow us on Instagram as well. Both the Banton Experience, my personal account, Hans Christian's personal account. And um, yeah, like the video, leave a comment, all that stuff, you know the drill. And check out the badmintonexperience.com. That's right. Grab your, your, your first item of our new merchandise. Yes. Bye-bye, guys. Bye, guys. And, and there lies the light.